went to pay a visit to a mortal I hadn't seen in some time. A mage by the name of Herenia. Evidently, she has been dead for some 900 years, which I understand you regard as a significant span of time. How very inconsiderate of her. The Nuru heard up and die on you like that. Nice place you've got here, by the way. You've got your worshippers, dead bodies lying around, even a vulture eating one. It really is the little touches that make a home. What do you want me for, anyway? Oh, hey, wait a minute, we've got company. Hey guys, welcome to ESO Vault. I'm Centurion, and this is Lyrinth, of course. A lot of you watched the No Pet Sorcerer build video recently, and thanks for that, by the way. But it kind of means I have to do the pet sork, too. I can't do one and not the other. Even though pet sorcerers have been done to death, I feel like I can add something by looking at them from the perspective of the average player. That's me. And I always feel like the meta pet sork is needlessly complicated, so a while back I did my simplified version. Now I'm going to revisit that with an updated build video. So if you guys are on board with that, let's go ahead and look at the character sheet. A lot of this is going to be familiar if you watched the last sorcerer video, and that's because this is the same base character. I'm running a Dark Elf, and they get bonuses to Magicka, Stamina, Weapon and Spell Damage, and Fire Resistance. They're at the top of the Magicka tier list, and I'll put that up for anybody interested. But, as always, I would strongly advise you to play the race you're interested in playing if you're rolling a new character. If you enjoy the lore and the stories associated with that race, then play that race. I'm running the Thief Mundus, which is the way to go for PvE damage dealer builds. If you watched the Necromancer video, you saw how even without doing anything special, penetration can go all the way to the max for dungeon bosses. And that's one of several reasons I don't advise taking the lover. Go with the Thief for more crit chance. My buff food is Mistral Banana Bunny Hash, and if you can keep it down, it'll increase your Magicka and health substantially. Up top, I've got all 64 points in Magicka, and that's two out of the last three builds that are spec'd into Magicka. Max Magicka winds up at 31,000 points, and health is at a comfortable 28,000 thanks to the bonus Pet Sorks get to health. Spell damage is at 5100 and crit is at 48%. And those are buffed values. Because this is an Oak and Soul build, Major Sorcery and Major Prophecy are already included in that. I'm skipping Penetration because it's the most overrated stat in PvE. Save that for when you're doing PvP. You're going to need it there. Resistances are at 17,000 thanks to the Oak and Soul ring. Alright, that's it for the character sheet. Your death draws nearer every day. The end of your very existence. And yet, you carry on with no unusual urgency. Fascinating. And every one of these jobs I do for you brings my death closer. Well, I better check my skills so this doesn't wind up being the last time we work together. This is an Oak and Soul build, which limits me to one bar. No light attack weaving here. As soon as I cast the first few skills, I hold my heavy attack and I don't let up. The first skill I use is Crystal Weapon. This sorcerer skill causes my next two heavy attacks to do increased damage and it also gives me the minor prophecy buff. This is one of the few buffs that the Oak and Soul Ring doesn't provide and it increases my spell crit by 6%. Next I press the button for my volatile familiar telling it to do its maximum damage. I'm never quite sure why I have to do that button press, but I do or that little guy won't fight as hard. Now I use the Destruction Staff skill, Elemental Blockade, and this is a mission critical skill for the Heavy Attack Pet Sork. And that's because the wall it puts on the ground will work in tandem with my Lightning Staff to cause enemies to be off balance. The off balance condition causes an enemy to take 70% more damage from heavy attacks for 7 seconds, and then off balance will be on cooldown for 15 seconds. Divide 70% by 3 and you'll see that's still a huge damage increase. Now I'm going to hold down my heavy attack button and queue up my next skill. While I'm holding down heavy attack, I press the button for my next skill, which is the new scribe skill, Shocking Soul. From here on out, I queue up every skill the same way. I just press the button while I'm holding heavy attack the whole time. The skills will automatically fire in between heavy attacks. Shocking Soul is my custom version of the Soul Burst Grimoire. It does instant shock damage, shock damage over time, 
and reduces my enemy's armor by 5,000 points for 10 seconds. Meta Heavy Attack builds use Daedric Prey here to increase pet damage. Pet damage isn't going to scale as well here. More on that in a minute. My other problem with Daedric Prey is it can be hard for the average player to keep track of it, and you have to time it well to get the most out of it. For me, I find it better to use Shocking Soul and alternate that with Crystal Weapon. I just go back and forth between the two and I'm savvy enough to keep track of that, and I bet you are too. The whole rotation from here on out is just alternating my two spambles and Refreshing Wall and the Volatile Familiar when they run out. My next skill on the bar is the Twilight Matriarch skill, and this is one reason pet damage isn't going to scale well here. I have to have a heal on my bar, so I can't take the Twilight Tormentor morph. The Twilight Matriarch does only half the damage of the Tormentor, but if I hit that button it gives me a tremendous heal, arguably one of the best heals in the game. I have one more skill and that's my ultimate, the Charged Atronach. This giant storm atro crashes down doing instant shock damage and shock damage over time to enemies in the area. Allies can activate the synergy giving everyone in my group Major Berserk for 10 seconds. Major Berserk increases damage by 10%. Alright, that covers the skills. Oh, and don't forget to hold down that heavy attack button. Lirenz, what are you doing in there? This job gets worse all the time. So the build did 48,000 points of damage per second, which is substantially higher than my previous version. Heavy attacks accounted for 60% of the damage, so hold that button down. Almost all of the damage was shock damage, which works great because sorcerers have a 5% bonus to that damage type. Yellow is shock damage, by the way, and white is physical damage. And it just so happens sorcerers have a 5% bonus for that too. Okay, let's press on. nuisance this Baron Zaldras has become. How dare they try to imprison me? And worst of all, forcing me to rely on you, a mortal. He shall pay for this indignity. I know one of these days I'm going to have your heartfelt thanks for all the times I've helped you. Hope is the cruelest torture of all, little mortal. Have you not yet learned this lesson? Apparently not but I have learned to check my gear after I've nearly been burnt to a cinder on someone's behalf. The gear is going to look familiar if you watch the other Heavy Attack Sorcerer video. My weapon is the Lightning Staff of the Sergeant. This set comes from Wayrest Sewers, which is one of the easier dungeons in the game. The Sergeant's Mail set increases the damage of my Heavy Attacks. Because the Lightning Staff procs its damage multiple times during one Heavy Attack, the Sergeant's Mail bonus damage gets applied multiple times. Unfortunately, no other weapon in the game will do the same thing. The weapon has to be a Lightning Staff. I'm using the precise trait with a shock damage cliff on the staff. I have to put a shock cliff on this or it won't work, period. I need to apply the concussed status effect. That in turn will allow all of elements to proc off balance. I'm also wearing one piece of the slime crawl monster set for extra crit. 
You can get the Slime Crawl Helm from Wayrest Sewers while you're there getting the Sergeant's Mail set. My next set is the Storm Master set, which comes from the Tempest Island Dungeon. A lot of players have their own favorite sets to run as the second set. This one's mine. To me, this is the best second set because of the extra crit it provides. The only easy to get set that's given it a run for the money when I've tried it is Deadly Strike. So if you've got that, go ahead and run it. Of course, sets like Noble Duelist and Order's Wrath will work. I just never found them to be quite as good as Storm Master. Storm Master, like Sergeant's Mail, increases the damage of my heavy attacks. Also like Sergeant's Mail, it adds damage multiple times during one Lightning Staff Heavy. The last piece of gear I have on is the Oaken Soul Ring. This gives me a long list of buffs, but the most important one is Empower, which increases the damage of my heavy attacks. You'll have to level the Antiquity skill line because the build won't work without the Oaken Soul Ring. Level the skill line, get the ring. You've got to have it to run one bar heavy attack builds. Okay, that's all the gear. Body pieces here are medium with one heavy piece. Remember, Sergeant's Mail only comes in heavy, so you're stuck with one piece of heavy armor because the Oaken Soul Ring takes up a jewelry slot. The body pieces are all divines with magic glyphs. And my jewelry is bloodthirsty with spell damage glyphs. Looking at the champion points, the blue slottables are Deadly Aim, Weapons Expert, Wrathful Strikes, and Fighting Finesse. And that finishes up the build. What? Where'd you go? This is the guy I'm fighting? He's 10 feet tall and he looks like he hasn't skipped a gym day in millennia. Hand the map to me, creature, or die protecting it. Well, I think I'd better go ahead and wrap things up. I'm going to have my hands full here. I hope you enjoyed today's Heavy Attack Pet Sork video. If you did, be sure to crush the like button, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel. The fashion show and fight follow right after this, as usual. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and enjoy your adventures in Tamriel.
is complete. I have my map, Drathus has his father, and you have your gold. Nice and neat. Just how I prefer. Perhaps I may have use for you in the future. Be prepared for my summons. Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs>